up? What's up? What's up, Willie? How are you? Good. I'm out of moving and grooving. I got the, I got the first lady of DC oh. on the live. This it's real out here right now. You hear me? Yes, real, real. Some real I, shit. I, I didn't even know it was gonna be this real. <laughs> well, it's gonna get way. It's gonna get way more real. It's gonna get way more real. It's time to put DC on the map. But it's time to yeah. um, or DC or DMV. You know, DMV. Put DMV on the map. Mm -hmm. So how? So um, tell me how how to um. So how did it, the, uh, say it she, actually actually it went good. It was okay. You know, what I'm saying I just was real like some of the questions he was asking me i was blown because i'm like i thought i heard everything i, I haven't <laughs> so i was looking like where the hell i've been that these people are saying this or somebody said this you know what i'm saying so a lot of stuff i basically stayed away from you know what I'm saying and i had to explain to him in my own form of fashion way like some shit just ain't for me to you know basically entertain or speak on Facts. basically Facts. so Facts. you know and then you know there was a couple of questions he asked me i just like i went over it and i i, I doubled it up and put it like you know no nah, he he you know he went with them people somewhere too you know what i'm saying so that way when i do my documentary i can go ahead and express where them places was or whatever the case may be you know but he went he went deep so <laughs> he went deep. So do you um so do you still be in contact somewhere with uh with your baby father? Um no, I ain't pray anybody on my live that's about to tap in or wherever okay. this video gets seen. This is the first lady of DC <laughs> far as Wayne <laughs> Curry's name go. This is this is um the mother of one of his one of his, one one of his, one of his, his children, son, right? And what we gonna do here at World War Polo Entertainment Group, we about to put um with her permission and everything, we're gonna give uh um the story, her story and mm -hmm. a story, a beautiful story, a very detailed, not detailed. Then we're gonna throw some little little fake stuff in there too, so nothing can be held, you know, to the to the grain of salt or whatever to make right. it a little more entertaining. Mm -hmm. Um but this is the first lady, one of, but far as this live go, the first lady of DC Fires Wayne Perry go. This is his baby, one is one of his children's mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, are you still in contact with him at all? No, I have not talked to him. And like, how many years? Maybe like two, three years. I haven't talked to him. Oh, There's a lot. It's 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 a lot going on with that yeah. situation you know yeah. what i'm saying so instead of me going back and forth with him or trying to aggravate him about certain things i just let it go now i feel you on that but three he knows years. he knows where to find you know he know where to find us if you know he wants conversation or whatever but you know i get messages i get messages but is I he allowed to talk on the phone at all mm -hmm. He can talk on the phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard I heard he Muslim, so he definitely in my prayers. Yeah. Um, um so like two or three years out here is a long time. And there's a long time too, but on, for for not to uh only spoke to him for two or three years, that I thought you was gonna say like 10, 15, you know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot more years and everything. Nah. But he's still in good spirit and things of that nature. He's good. He's good. You know, I think his his problem is, you know, they go back and they lie on me and say I'm on the internet saying this and saying this and saying this, but they don't tell him the truth about why I be on the internet and what I'm on the internet really saying and what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Because all right, so let's clarify that matter now. When you on the internet, what are you normally? What is what is your goal? What is your attention? What is your just, the, you know your vibe when you on the on, on the internet for the people can know? Like really, you know, like stuff that I hear about him. You know what I'm saying? I I react to right. it, 
and that's just that's it's not it's not something that I decided to do or I just jumped out there. It's something that I've been doing the whole time. I react to anything that's said about him that I feel as though it's disrespectful because like he any can't, like any of mother of anybody's children mother would right. do. Right. And that's what I'm trying to explain to them. Like you niggas won't stand up and you won't say nothing. You won't, you know, you won't address it. You keep talking about that's not the way we supposed to handle stuff. But at the same time, y'all sitting here watching these niggas get online and get on the internet and say all type of crazy shit about him. What's the craziest thing you heard? That that if you was, don't if you don't mind saying it, if you feel oh like you don't want to say it, don't say it. I didn't got on live, I done did my own live, I done did my own YouTube about it. Okay. This stuff about him sleeping with men, that was way out of pocket. He's yeah. been on, he been on, they had him on the internet way before I got out of prison. You know what I'm saying? He's been on the internet. I went back and I looked. He's been on the internet since 2008 that's a long time so from 2008 all the way up to now so when this dude branch got on here Who? about branch oh okay when he, he got on got online i think he got online hey, in, right. in 2022 or 2023 okay. and I'm supposed to go. here we go i'm listening he got on he got on when he went on somebody's platform and you know came out talking about he seen him in a cell, you know, uh in a sexual manner with a man, and that's a lie. Yeah, that's that's a lie. I wasn't so, locked you know, up. Right. So I I'm just not... you know, I let it I let it ride as long as I can let it ride. Right. And I thought they had stopped talking about it and that it had leveled out and they left it alone. But every time you speak his name now to anybody, that's the first thing they say. Right. Oh yeah, we heard he was sleeping with men. We heard, you know what I'm saying? And all this stuff that they hear is nothing but lies. And then the stuff that they put on the internet, it's always if this nigga do a story on him, he hypes the story up, put more to it. If this one do a story on him, he and the stories just keep going on and on and on. It's a bunch of lies. Nobody has ever asked him. Now, you know, I said on Say Cheese, I said nobody in this world has a real Wayne Perry story. They don't. Big facts. They don't. So he will write certain people and say certain things. People don't understand Wayne is too smart to give you a story like that. He's right. too smart for that. He's not going to do that. So, you know, they get mad at me because they feel I'm trying to be in the front of everything and take a bag or get some money on his name. I could have been did that shit many years ago. Right. I could have been did that many years ago. I could have did it when I was in prison. Seriously. So it's not really about so how, how long you was history. locked up. I was locked up for nine and a half years. Damn. So I I expressed some of that on Say Cheese. You know what I'm saying? I when he gave me, I like how he did it, because that's why these niggas won't go running their mouth talking about, oh, she just got on the platform and started talking about Wayne. No, I got on the platform where he was asking me about Wayne. I straightened up some of that shit because it didn't make sense to me. Because some of the stuff he was saying, I never heard in my life. So I couldn't right. say to him, yeah, that's true. And yeah, that's true. And I explained to him, like, one thing I won't do, I don't care, you know, what our differences is between me and him. He still is who he is to me. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. I'm not going to dry snitch on him. I'm not going to tell on him because what the fuck am I gaining out of that? Right. Right. So, you know, that's that's their problem with me. They talk, oh, she just, this, that. Nah, you niggas don't, you you you, you talk all this, this my, he, I'm his, this my, I'm his son, I'm his uncle, I'm his nephew, this, that, never. But when these niggas online and people online saying all this fucked up shit about him, none of y'all see nothing. And I'm not understanding that. So I went out the branch and told him, you lying on this man. I can't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? People out oh, here. Is is doing you know people out here doing shit? You spoke Why with him. Why would you put a bone on this man like that for nothing? You, he did you nothing said, to you. You, you. you said you spoke with him. No, I ain't speak with him. I ain't 
speak to him, I went online oh. and you, the same oh. thing he did, I did. I told the people he was lying. Oh. He lied on him and I told them why he lied on him. It's over a bra. You didn't see him in no cell hitting no man. You seen him in a cell hitting a bra that you had something to do with. Both of y'all had something to do with the bra. Wayne had the leverage over her. That's why she was over there sleeping with Wayne. And you got yeah. mad. So you come out here after all these years and say this man is sleeping with me, that shit don't make sense to me. And I don't respect it. I don't respect oh. it at all. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it shouldn't have never been said. It was unnecessary. If he had a beef with him, he say he was locked up in there with him. I don't know. He said he was locked up in there with him. If you was locked up in there with him, you should have straightened that shit while you was in there. Why you wait? all these years so you can come home on the street and bring that shit out here like you was gonna make a million off of it you try to embarrass this man fucking disrespect him mess with his characteristics of who he is why so have you, you spoke to wayne uh mr perry um about that, that situation since that when, um when since it story? first happened when it first happened i said something to him but I don't like to, like in his situation, and a lot of people don't understand, ADS is a motherfucker. They can play online all they want. Soon as you hear something about him, they do shit like they can fuck with his mail or take his phone. A lot of shit comes behind that. So I just tried to stay away from writing him so much, saying stuff to him about the streets. You know what I'm saying? So right. when he doesn't hear shit from me, He'll hear from the haters and they lie on me. And I'm telling him, like, I've never ever once crossed you. I've been loyal to you the whole fucking time. So what would make you think, or even if you thought that I was going to do something fine? That's not who I am. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. So did he, so he, he's, he's never spoke out um, and said, you know, that he cares or about being, you know, that he even cares about it or even trying to clear his name or he just they let won't it be. let him. They won't let him. If he if he makes if he makes a phone call and start talking about certain things with a person, they'll cut the phone off. Right. And see these niggas, these niggas play these games, but they know what's going on. If he so, write if even if he writes something sometime they'll go and they'll read the mail and you won't get it. Right. They will tear the shit up. Right. And I don't want to, you know, like I said, I don't I don't write him and say nothing because I don't want to become more of a problem to his situation than he already has. So they, they go and tell him she going off, she out there saying something to such and such. He knows how I am. He knows how I am. He knows if somebody say something about him i'm gonna say something he knows that so i just let it go like it's going so does he have like a oh uh, is there any possibility that he or uh, do your particular knowledge if you care to share or uh, that whether he would be coming home at any point at all i feel you know and i said this on um say cheese i feel if they would have basically kept Wayne offline if okay he it was already a set of things going on people had written you know a set of things and that was like 2000 I was locked up so like 2008 9 you know my son was telling me people was writing stuff on him so that was then I just believe if they wouldn't have kept trailing this shit on and on and on he probably would be out of ADX by now. He probably would be out of ADX by now because people don't understand. They think it's a game. It's not. These fucking government people, the feds, everybody see us online. They right. see everything. They watch. They listen. You know what I'm saying? So right. I just feel if, and I didn't get online and start talking about him and start addressing shit until like 2018. And I thought by now, it would have calmed down. Then here come this nigga talking about the man sleeping with men. So that doubled on some more shit. Everything mm. you see online about him is negative. Nobody gave him respect to the fact that 
He changed his life. He's not the same person anymore. He changed his name. They went and put the Muslim name with his street name and just screwed up everything. It's sad. It's really sad, and people don't, you know, they be like, why you be so upset about it? You shouldn't be, you know, just forget about this. How do I forget about somebody who was good to me? And, and look, what, look look, what's going on. So but you niggas when you talk about, here. all right, so just trying to, you know, change the subject a little bit, because everybody, let it be known, World War Polo Entertainment Group, I'm Polo DMV movie producer, and we is going to drop miss a stortious per, not per se the wayne perry story but she has a phenomenal story of her own mm -hmm. and it's gonna be dope so like y'all heard it here first we about to be big working so um when you say he treated you good can we get into some of that i mean he was never like he never did nothing foul to me he never you know people would be like okay well how did you deal with him he dealt with so many women. I was young, you know, and I expressed which, which that. Which baby mother are you? I'm, How many baby mothers he got? He has, let me see. Uh, each one, of, each, he has eight baby mothers. Which, got, which one, not, in numerical he, order, which one are you? My son is the baby. <laughs> so you the last one? I'm the last one. Right. My son is the baby. So was he loving? Let's talk about, let's, let's change the narrative. It's possible. Yeah, that's what that's he loving? Loving? Yes, As he two, was very, you, he, he wasn't nothing like these people try to make him like he's some type of animal. He went around here chopping people's heads off and all that shit. No, I never seen none of that from him. He never bought that type of behavior to me. Wayne was really respectful. You know what I'm saying? He was a respectful dude. And anything, you know, so if I asked for something, he gave it to me. You know, what I wanted to do, he let me do. I mean, you know, like, I would never say, because people be trying to say like, I wasn't his girlfriend. I was there, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I ended up having a kid by him. Okay. Simple as that. He respected right. me all the way through the lane. Whatever the hell was going on, he shared things with me. Yeah, he told me things that I would never, ever tell nobody because mm. it's nobody's business. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's nobody's business. So what I'm saying, like, I never wanted for anything. He showed me a lot of things. And I said on there, like, he was the person who told me who Rafa was because I was in a car in a limousine with Faggy Puffy and Rafa said came to pick her up. I, You know, a lot of people don't know, but they will. When I got with Wayne, I was really green. I wasn't green to the streets. I know, knew every hood in D.C., but I was green to a lot of certain big time dudes like that. So right. when Wayne, when Wayne got me, you know, I started maneuvering around and I started knowing about this, that, and the other, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And watching him do certain things and go certain places. And that's just how shit was. He never, you know what I'm saying? He, that, man, that man did a lot for me. Like for real, and I, I said it on Say Cheese, like the difference between fashion, like my mother and my father, they had us fashion. Like we stayed with heads, tennis shoes, Gucci, I mean like sweatsuits and feet off sweatsuits and shit like that. But when I got with him, he was on a bigger level for like Gucci shit and Hermes shit and shit like that. So right. that was a difference to me. He taught me so many things like women type stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't say it on there, but I can say it on here. Like basically, you as a woman, your bra supposed to match your panties and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, 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 right. But shit like that. You know what I'm saying? He brought that shit to light with me. And a lot of people would think, you know, looking at him, because people would be like, how the fuck you on? And, and I lost a lot of my friends, you know what I'm saying? Because they used to be like, you too young to be messing with him. And my mother, she went through a trance. She thought well, I was too young how to be messing with him. When you started I was messing 17 when I, messed, when I met him. I okay. was 17 and he was like 23, 25. I was 17 years old. Okay. And I was already in the street, but I wasn't on his side of the fence. Fact. I was uptown on Fairmont Street. You see what I'm okay. saying? And I had to break the truck. Because where I was on Fairmont, I ain't want to be there no more, basically. And I wanted to be on his end. And I did that. You see mm. what I'm saying? So from there, yeah, he had bras. He was doing shit in the street, but it had nothing to do with me. When he was with 
me. He was with me how he treated me. He treated me. So for me to just go and turn my back on him and be like, fuck that nigga. Everybody else saying it. No, because I know a different person. I don't know oh. the person they talking about. He went and killed this person and did. I, I, he didn't bring that shit to me. I didn't right. see him do nothing. Right. And so was he ever around uh, when the child was born? When my son was born? Yeah. Yes, he came to the hospital to make sure we was all right. Was yes, he, he had a good my father. With, how, yes. Tell us the state of being a father. He's been a good father to all his kids. They were babies and little kids when he went to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I ain't got no beef with none of his kids' mothers except for one. I hate her, but that's a different story. But for the most part, he was a damn good father to all his kids. Mm all his kids he made sure each one of them had stuff they ate they was good right. Right. nothing nothing was out the way nothing so how, was out the way how long how long did which i have gone last before he oh. actually got locked up since you um, the last baby mother then you probably may have been with him through that you know trial period or whatever yeah i was I I was in and out with him because he was dealing with another female that he had in the street doing mm -hmm. whatever he was doing with her. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, so right. right, right. So I was in and out with him. But when he, you know, when he finally, when he got like, I I didn't know that he was going to prison. I had no idea. And then when he went to prison and I'm here, I saw it on, you know, my mother had woke me up because I think like three, three or four. Four days before he got locked up, he had came to our house and he stayed, you know, saying that he was with our son and stuff like that. And I think he probably did the rest that with the rest of his kids, you know what I'm saying? Because I think he kind of felt he was getting ready to go, but he never said nothing. Okay. So three days, four days after that, my mother woke me up and he was on the TV. He was on the TV. And they were saying, Eleanor, you know, they locked up the DC murderer gangster. And I'm looking, but my parents my father knew about wayne and what he was doing and he didn't like it so i kind of shot away from talking to my father about the situation because at that time he's looking at me like you my daughter and this was you having a baby by you know and they couldn't you know my, he was a street nigga. simple as that he was a street nigga. how you gonna have a baby by the street nigga and this thing and i'm telling them like i ain't trying to hit on that shit. i'm gonna be okay so my mother you know him and my mother they became real cool my mother really liked him they became real cool that's what i'm saying people talk shit about him he's not that type he and you know the dude asked me he said was he living two lives and i'm like i can't even i can't even say you know what i'm saying i don't think he was living two lives but if he was okay what the hell i only know one side he has a good side of him man like he will help people he gave people shit. he did shit in little community down southwest you know what i'm saying i never seen a bad side of this dude. never so after that you know he you know when i went i went to see him over the jail and i'm looking and i'm like what the fuck is going on so at this point he like they got me i'm locked up but he never you know expressed he expressed a lot to me but like i said i'm not i'm not giving this business out right. like that but right. for the most part he was like i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna get out of here he he in he, his he wanted me to understand in so many words i'm going to jail but in his head he was like, i'm getting out of here so what was i to do so I had a fucking baby. I had you a fucking have baby a uh, you got a son by him right Mm -hmm. or a son so um how does your son feel about if you if you feel comfortable with sharing my it, son don't, don't like, my son don't like it my yeah. son does not, not like it he does not like you know how he hears stuff about his father on the street because the only person he can really ask the truth about his father is me and i tell my son don't listen to the public don't listen right. to what these niggas say they don't these niggas don't really know him they just you know they trying to get in where they fit in and they ain't fitting in so don't listen to that shit. you listen to your mother or you write your father and you ask him personally about him and he's done that so they mm -hmm. you know 
He's told him what he told him. Right. right. But the up, the but the other stuff, my son don't like. None of his kids, they don't like it, and I feel bad for them because, you know, just like this shit about him sleeping with men. I don't want his kids hearing that shit. I don't care who their mothers is. Right. I don't want them hearing that because that's not the truth. Right. That's not right. the truth. Tell, if you want, if you want, and these niggas that's talking shit about him, they don't have no kids. So frankly, they don't care. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And why I keep throwing dirt on him? Because why? Because you scared of him? Because you know if he come out here, y'all think he coming to take over something? I, I feel as though he should get up. They letting all the fucking rats out. DC is like rat town around here. You posting rats and all that. Even y'all with the rats or y'all with the, the same people. Like, I'm fucking confused. I'm not posting that nigga on my page. I don't give a damn where he coming from. They shouldn't let him out either. So, you know, it gets real with me and they be looking at me like Storcia, you know, we live in a whole different world. I understand that, but you got to understand me. I live in my world that I live in. I don't want to fuck with y'all. And how I got a question. I feel about me, that's cool. Okay, before that, you know, for the, the thing about the sleeping with man, let's go to the part the era or the time period before that right how as but as wayne Perry's baby mother in in dc you feel what i'm saying you know his name is big like the mayor in this, in this <laughs> area. It, it is what it is you know i'm not lying right um he, he he's a he is an actual living legend um alhamdulillah he muslim now so i hope that that at least that part um a lot of us young guys we can take that you know a, a, to a lot we need to be getting back to right all right but um as his baby mother right mm -hmm. if that's the term i could use how was it from the time he got locked up and let's we, we're not talking about the the weird um allegation part just normal how was it to be his baby mother and walk the streets of dc and everybody know you ain't pray baby mother but he locked up now some was a little tidbit of scaredness because i really didn't know i was hearing certain people say certain things but with me i, I was basically like i ain't scared of nobody ain't nobody gonna do shit to me and my son you understand what I'm saying? And that's how I carried it. Because my my story about my life period while he went to jail is a whole different thing. So I'ma say on my own, I weighed my own, you know what I'm saying? As far as with dudes in the street and by me being his son mother. And a lot of dudes, they would, you know, it was a respect thing. It was because they would be like, I'm gonna go ahead and store you. I'm gonna respect you because you that man son mother, you know what I'm saying? So I got a lot of that. But on the real for real, I wasn't scared. Mm -hmm. I was never scared of shit, nothing. I was never scared. I wasn't really scared for my son. I wasn't scared. I was only thing that took me a toll on me is when I went to prison and I left my son out here by himself. That was the only thing. But as my son was growing up and while he was in prison. You know, we kept contact with him. He knew everywhere we moved, everywhere we lived. We was not out of contact. So he really raised my son From by, a distance. Right. by mail and phone calls. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't, all this other shit didn't start with us until I went to prison and I came back out. Because before I went to prison, I was doing a lot of stuff for him. You know what I'm saying? But when I went to prison, it opened the door for other niggas to get in and basically take my spot. And I was cool with that. But mm. they wasn't cool with it because they was like, when she get out, you know what I'm saying, she going to be trying to do this, that, and the other. I'm not trying to do shit but defend him. That's it. But for the most part, no. I wasn't never scared. And and everybody, they yeah, they knew. They knew. And I had more, a lot of dudes, you know, they basically catered to me more towards my son in certain things because they knew that was his father you know what i'm saying so 
and you know i don't i don't know how his other kids mothers were because they're not i'm more into the street and on the net and shit like that they really not they're not only mm. one she's in the street but that's the one i can't stand i hate her we don't pay her no mind but i'm talking about the other yeah i'm, I'm talking about the other ones you know they they really not in the street like i was and they they not on line you know what I'm saying but if something was and i always said this and i don't care you know about how nobody else feel about it because those still his kids if something was to pop off if i could get him out you know and i'm gonna make sure his kids are right because because i mean it's just in due respect and that's who i am so his children get along with each other or no they do mm -hmm. I know that got to be big growing up in this city and why ain't pray your father, right? That, that has, that, that carries a certain level of stress, respect, like all, it's just like an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. having, um, a father of that name, fathers and statue, um, in this city, right. cause he, he, he is a living legend in mm -hmm. this area, whoever it's, you want to say it or not. Right, they. I ain't gonna cut you off. You said do, they, do the kids get along? You got, you got. It's, it's like split in half because you got like one set of kids and my son. They all get along, but you got another couple, maybe like two or three, that want to be, you know, in the lynch of the kid lane, and they don't get along with me and my son, and we just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Whatever relationship he has with them, that's him and their relationship. You know what I'm saying? With whatever relationship we have with him, that's how it's going. But the other kids, yeah, my son, they all get along. Well, that's dope. Mm -hmm. So um, when we do this movie, because this movie going to be lit. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be <laughs> wonderful. Um, this going to be, yeah. What is the, one of the main points that you want to emphasize in this movie and telling the story, whatever the story that we're going to tell through your lens, um, like, like what is the main thing? And like, and this story is not actually about Wayne Perry, but as his baby, as you, as the baby mother, it might have some traces of him. Cause we don't want to really get too, you know, too involved in what's going on. Cause this case still over and stuff like that. Right. Um, but telling your story, how would it, what would be some of the main points that you want to emphasize on, on you, you and him and you and your son? It's basically what I would really emphasize on the fact that how a child loses two parents to the prison system. Mm. You know what I'm saying? One, one when he was a baby and the other one when he was 14, 15 years old. And the biggest part was his mother because my son did an interview on Up For Debate and he asked my son, some questions and you know my son expressed to him like when my mother went to prison that was a dark part in my life mm. you know so it was a very dark part in my life so basically you know emphasizing on people letting them know like when you leave your child you know when the person leave their kids or leave their child in a situation like that what it could do to your child you know what I'm saying so mm. a lot of parents i think people because i didn't all i thought about was hustling getting that money and i made sure my son was okay but i didn't think about the mental part for my son and a lot of parents they don't they don't think about that you know when people out here they on drugs and you know all they think is i'm gonna use these drugs and my kids just gonna be there but they don't think you know you are destroying your child as you moving on doing things you know what i'm saying and then for my son he gotta come back and take the comeback of listening to what the world thinks about his father mm. how old is your son my son is now 34 he's 34. Mm. so he has his he, he have a family at this point yeah he has or? a daughter i have a granddaughter she's 16. 
Mm. So how does, through your lens, how does your granddaughter view the situation of knowing that her grandfather is one of the most well-known people that walk <laughs> through D.C.? It's sad to say, it's sad to say, but true, she experienced it in school. She experienced it in school because she was going to the school over Northeast and my son had to go up her school for a parent teacher conference. And one of the parents recognized my son and told her son who my son was in turn, his daughter was in my granddaughter's class. Mm. My We never told, which was, which was bad, but we had to end up telling my granddaughter, you know, like who her grandfather really was because the little girl told her, she was like, I heard your grandfather in jail in, in prison for murder. And my granddaughter is looking like, what? Mm. And and, mm. and that's the part that I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? It just goes from generation to generation. So she learned in school. So when, and I used to take her to school and pick her up. So when I picked her up from school, she was crying. And I'm mm. looking at her, mind you, she was only 11 years old at this time. She was crying and she was like, grandma, so I'm saying, why are you crying? So in that sense, a guy that knows her grandfather, they real, real cool. He was working at the school and he had, was talking to my granddaughter, but he told me, he said, Stosha, she was in a turmoil. She didn't understand what the little girl was talking about. And the little girl said in front of the class, so all the classmates started saying, your grandfather a murderer, he a killer, and she just, she lost it. <laughs> so when I explained it to her, I explained it to her, and I got her quiet. So when she started getting on the internet and stuff, and which was the most devastating part for me, because I'm online. If you Google my name all oh, my shit come up my charges and everything if you google her grandfather name the same thing she went online and she googled it and she read it mm. so at this point she's 16 she knows mm. what can you do you know what i'm saying it's not it's what, what can you do and he spoke to her you know he spoke to her that's his favorite little granddaughter he spoke to her and he didn't tell her that, and she asked me, she was like, Grandma, you think, I said, if you want to tell your grandfather, you know what I'm saying, you know, or whatever the case may be, I said, but at this point, I think you need to, you know, just go along, because that might hurt him more in there than help at, him, you know what I'm saying? Any point in y'all relationship, because you said y'all, uh, you know how it might be, you just... You just, you know, you moving and grooving. Ain't nothing real tangible. Um, but at, even and with that, would have? Did you ever feel like you was in love with him? Yeah, I loved him. Not I loved him. Was you in love? Yeah, yes. That, that was the only person I was. You know what I'm saying? At that time, I was young. Can you imagine yeah. somebody? Yeah, you, you sprung. Somebody when you getting with somebody of his caliber. When you was young, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I did. I took a lot of shit. Now he say nothing. <laughs> so I he did. was like, he was very charming to you. Very. very. Did he ever? Did, did, did was did y'all ever have at, at any shape, form, or fashion like a, a, a got into like a physical altercation? Not that's that's some telling people. None of that. He was just a he lot never of dudes ever, like him. he never like dudes now. I can't I can't deal with him because it's too much back and forth. And what I mean by back and forth, if I say something, if I'm arguing with you and I say something, these niggas they want to argue back and go back and forth. I can't deal with that. With him, none of that. None of that. I, I, I and it wasn't it wasn't even to the fact that he he spoke very softly all the time he never raised his voice you he was a type of dude that you never knew when he got made seriously <laughs> you never knew when he got made he, he didn't look like he was mad about nothing he kept all that so when the dude asked me a question 
I'm saying him. I'm saying what? No, not him. Not him. Not him. He, you would never know that he was made. And he would still be joking and talking and playing and going right along. There <laughs> never was a point in time where I, we, we never had an argument. I never, ever asked him, like, I never questioned him about no females because I didn't care. First of all, I was young. Then I was going, you know, going into my adult agent i had my son when i was 21 and he was still here so i never questioned him i didn't chase him around i didn't follow him around or nothing and people used to really think they used to be like you you crazy like this nigga be doing all type of shit he going and i said okay they called come to my house so should we see him uptown with so and so in the car I say okay i'll be in the car tonight <laughs> <laughs> they, never understood. they never understood they would be like even she is blocking this shit or she's crazy for real not understanding i and him had a whole different relationship yeah, I, had, I had an understanding I understand it exactly right. that went enormously enormously seriously so um did he like go go we from dc did all he like the time, go -Go? all the time was his he be, uh, he, um, was he like what he like red asses. Okay. He like red asses. Mm -hmm. he would did he be, ever I go mean, to the go go? Huh? He, did, he, did he ever go to the go go? Yeah, he was on the go go. He gave himself. I heard a bra talking about she gave him parties. That's a lie. <laughs> he gave himself parties at the chateau. The chateau on Benner Road. Right. He gave himself parties. He gave himself parties. And all these men were there. All the Southwest dudes. Everybody was there. But I wasn't there. I at that time, when when I met him, he was just coming home in his third week of coming from Lorton when I met him. So you know, I, I didn't I didn't get to go to his parties and stuff like that. And for me at that time, I was just like really laid back with a lot of shit with him. Yes, you know I'm saying right, because right. like I explained to say cheese. When I first met him, he didn't tell me his real name. So I guess he was in the midst of like, I know she young. I don't really know if I'm going to be dealing with her. You know what I'm saying? So when he, you know, took me home and um, I got out the car, my cousin, who is LGBTQ, his name Brian. Brian knew who he was, so Brian was looking out the window. He was like, Oh my God, so what you doing getting out of the car? That's Wayne Perry. So I'm like, who is Wayne Perry? What are you talking about? That's not <laughs> the dude's name that's driving the car. So he was like, yes, it is. So I didn't say nothing because at that point, I didn't care. Because in my head, I'm saying, I ain't going to see this dude no more. It don't matter what his name is. But it didn't pan out like that. Like four hours or maybe five hours later, he called and was like, sure, I'm going to pull up back to your house. So when he pulled back up, and I didn't get to say all oh, this on say cheese. When he pulled back up, I went and I said, "Okay, so what you pulling up for? What you, 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 you what, you, what's your name?" So he started laughing. So he said, "You, somebody down southwest must have called you." So I told him, I said, "Nah, my cousin Brian in here." He was like, "Okay." So he told me his name. He took me to to the cheesecake factory, and we, you know, and we went from there. And the, and. The that's clear for the matter. The Cheesecake Factory was the shit back then. So we Thank have to you. sit here acting like no Cheesecake Factory ain't official. If you was at the Cheesecake Factory, that was like a huge and thing. That, that was top of the that, line. But we, so we, that, that, we clarifying. We clarifying matters. Part. Let me tell you this part. So I'm young, right? right? I ain't never been to the Cheesecake Factory in my life. <laughs> So he take me, I'm sitting here looking like, I'm looking the at the menu. Like, menu. Yes, I'm like, what the fuck? So he looking at me. He don't eat no pork at all. You can't can't bring that around. Man, how, so he take me. Yes, he tell And listen, me. All, all the Muslims that see this, because, you know, this going to be everywhere, make sure y'all at least pray for this brother. Yes, and, please. And, and um, because, like, at the end of the day, this is our brother. And, yes. Uh, 
no however, matter what. However, let's at least get the doers in for him, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And you know, Allah is the best of planners. So I just want to put that in there real quick. So, you know, mm -hmm. so he didn't eat pork. So he, he already had, he already had the Islam men of real yes. heaven way so, before, right? He okay. I, I, I wouldn't be, I was, I was always a little ashamed around him because I was young. I didn't know, but with him, he didn't care. So, so did you said, ever experience? I apologize. Did you ever experience um uh him being around him and Rafa Edmund at the same time? Like no, outside of that one time mm -hmm. you told said no, no. He so was, did you know who Rafa Edmund was? Did you hear about who Rafa Edmund was back then? I heard about who he was, and like I, I said on there, I asked him about Rafa Edmund and I said. He probably wouldn't even remember me right now or remember my name because it was just a quick thing. Mm. He picked up, he was very fond of the LGBTQ, the transgender uh, females, men or whatever that I was hanging with. And that was Puffy, Mimi, Tracy, and Miss Ann. And he was fond of them. Like I said, I can't say he slept with them. But the day that I met him, he pulled up to her house in a limo. And we got in the limo. He drove us around the corner. We were supposed to go, go to the mall. We was going to a Kirk Bone party that night. We were supposed to go to the mall, and Rafus came to meet her. She never said to me, that's Rafus. And I think what happened, somebody saw me in the car, and they went back and told Nicozy. I'm not going to call him Wayne anymore, Nicozy. And when I seen him, he was like, you know, what's up, this, that, and the other. And he looked at me, and he said, so you don't know who car you got in? You just getting in people. And I was embarrassed because I didn't know who Rafus was. He said, that's Rafus. But he never, ever told me that Rafus was his cousin or none of that. Like, he kept me away from a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I think it was right, for, right. for my good or for my own reasons. So, he kept me away from a lot of stuff, you know, and certain stuff that he did. He shared a lot of stuff with me. He told me a lot of stuff, blase, 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 but for the most part, he kept me away. Like when he, when I would go with him, he would come to get me or he would send this dude, may he rest in peace, named Sales. Sales would come and get me a lot or he would come and get me. He never ever put me in the car with no pole or none of that. Mm. None of them, none, none of that. Mm. None of that. So I, I never like, you know, I never really encountered so all what that. school did you go to? I went to to Myers Elementary, Uptown. I went to Cadoza. I went to Van Ness Elementary. That's that. I'm really from Capus. I'm from Capus Southeast. I'm from Capus. Mm -hmm. So I went to Van Ness Elementary. I went to damn near all the schools in DC. I went to. <laughs> all right. So you say when you started messing with uh, Mr. Perry, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wayne Perry. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we gonna put respect <laughs> on his name. Right? <laughs> When you was um when you started um messing with him or and hot you know the thing that y'all had going on put it like that, you was seventeen. Was you still in school? I was in Wilson High School. By the so time. did the um did like did the, the you know the other girls or the other you know you know because you know if you seventeen what's that like the twelfth grade? Mm -hmm. Um, so. You know, if you're in the 12th grade in D.C., you try like pop. You know what's going on. You try like in out the streets. You going to school, but you you try doing your third thing a little bit. You feel me? So, then that his cousin is who he is, and he is who he is. That you ever get any like whiff of like status or anything like that? Being in school, messing with a guy that caliber. Or no, did nobody but, really didn't know y'all was messing with each other? No, it was just the fact that, you know, he had came up Wilson one time and the girls that was at Wilson, I it, it my I was like a little little tomboy like girl. So mm. when they really found out that I was messing with him, they was like everybody was they was against me messing with him because I was young. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was against so I didn't really I lost a lot of friends behind messing with him hmm. because you know they was telling me he gonna do this to you and you don't need to be messing with him you don't know what type of dude he was but in my head I'm saying 
y'all don't understand what I already experienced from him. He's not going to do me like that. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't. So mm. by, by me being, you right, by me being young, we all in the street. But again, I did, my brothers and them, they were one side on Southeast, one side on Northeast, one side up Northwest. You know what I'm mm. saying? So they didn't really connect with all of that either. So did your brothers know who he was yeah, and his status? Was, yeah, they knew who he was, but they, they, they had no about that? They didn't like it, especially my brother that passed away, Rico. He was he. They didn't like it. He was devastated. He was like, "You can't do this," you know what I'm saying? But I was already at my wits' end with them. You was, I was gone. doing it anyway. You was gone <laughs> off. Uh, yeah, I was doing yeah. it anyway. It didn't matter what <laughs> nobody said. <laughs> Nah, for so, real. I wasn't even listening to my father because my father was like, "You, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? You don't, and the thing about it is, people, because he asked me on stage, yeah, they was telling me, just like now how they be doing all this talking, he this, that, and the other. People was coming to me all the time, like, you don't know who you messing with. You need to back off. You need to leave him alone. I heard it so much till I got tired seriously so and I you couldn't it. see exactly what all the stuff that they were saying because you None. know another you understand what you call him what you call what's, what's his name what you Nicosi. call him Nicosi. Nicosi. you know the cozy different from um i, I from, saw a whole different person and i right. never like because i i think he knew that people was coming back telling me but the thing with me and him was I never expressed to him whatever the streets told me or whatever he might thought that I knew. And I think that's what that was a lot with him with me too. I was quiet about a lot of shit. Very quiet. And he knew I would never basically turn on him or give him up or do anything ratchet. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So did you ever experience or feel like you may have experienced um his friends or people that like you know that was close to him fearing him or, or any sort or was they like that's the home they cool that, because uh, you know he, he, he's a little older than me so I, I don't even really experience hearing stories mm -hmm. just like everybody else so were was his friends nervous of him uh, or how uh, would to your not, understanding. Not, not you don't, so much. Please, you ain't got to say no names no, on this part. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't do that. Mm -mm. Not so much as the ones that I knew that was really close to him. They wasn't. I'm, I may can say one. One. I, I, I think he was really fear of him, but he went along with the program. You know what I'm saying? He went along with the program. But mm. the rest of them. The rest of them, no, they 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 was with them. You know what I'm saying? That's that that's who they wanted to be. That's that was their main. They was with right. him. Right. They was with him. So what kind of cars did he drive or did he ride around with? People? He had all type what of cars. Kind of cars he had. He had Benzes. When I met him, he was in a white Benz. He had Benzes, BMWs, Infinities. You know. MPV vans and he had all type of stuff. Right. He had all he was, type of he, stuff. He was like really lit, like really this, flat. This dude really. asked me, he said, Did you ever know there was a time where people in DC were scared to drive their cars because they thought that Nicosi was going to take their cars from them? And I was like, What? <laughs> I said they made this man out to be the biggest fucking monster that he's not. Yeah. Yeah. They made him out to be a monster that he's not. I said, I never heard nothing like that. He took people's cars. He didn't have to take anything. <laughs> you know, there was a time, you know, I said online, I was with him and he pulled up and niggas just started giving him money. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> what the hell? But I was minding my business. <laughs> right. Did y'all? I ever go out of town or anything like that? I went to Atlanta City with him one time, and when I came back, he had bought me 
and I think I expressed this online before. He had bought me some Gucci stuff, and the girls down southwest, they they was jealous. They, they was trying to jump me. They literally was mm. going to jump me, and I didn't know that they was going to jump me, but his um one of his friends from down southwest had called him because I was hanging down southwest with another uh, LGBTQ little dude, Tyrone. And man, Tyrone was outside, and Southwest used to have bands and shit down there. And they called him and told him they about to try to jump Storcia. And he, you know, told them to give one of the bras the phone and put them on a loudspeaker and told them, y'all better not touch her. If I get down there and something happens to her, everybody gonna be laid out, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of the jealousy with me and him it's from stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Because they felt like he more so protected me from certain things or they felt he was too attached to me on certain stuff. And it was another bra he was running around the street with and they was like, okay, you know, she ain't saying nothing about that. And people was coming to me like, say something to him, you know what I'm saying? Because this bra gonna get him this, that, never. And I told them, guess what? I'm not saying nothing. That's him. You know what I'm saying? He Bro. know what he doing. He a grown man. That's him. I'm not saying nothing about nothing. So, um, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer that, mm -hmm. you know, that a man can love more than one woman, like, or be in love with one more, more than one woman. woman. Mm -hmm. Please don't crucify me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I ain't make me a law, maybe. So I don't, you know what I mean? I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So at, I said that to say, um, even though he had more than one woman or how he was moving, you know, if you got, you get money, you know, mm -hmm. things is a little different for people who got money who don't got money. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he was in love with you? Do you feel like he had love for you? I know. Like, what is, what is his feeling? He, uh, you know, he, I, I most definitely feels like he, yeah, it might have been he was in love with me, but I most definitely feel like he had love for me because he never, like, the, the like I said, the certain things that he would do and the way he would, you know, situate things for me and show me certain things. I ain't nobody going, ain't no dude taking their time to do all that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wow. They just hitting it, hitting and, and letting you go on. Keeping it moving, keeping it moving, but he didn't. And and for me, because I knew he, he was in the street messing with so many women, I even put myself in that situation. I was like, this dude is not possibly thinking about my ass, but I was wrong. So I, I did was you wrong. allow yourself to, okay, if you, in your mind, if you feel like he's not all the way 100 as far as, you, he got other women, right? Mm -hmm. Did you allow yourself at any point to, you know, say like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to this dude because we not all the way locked in anyway. Or did you feel a certain level of like, he's doing what he do being a man, but I'm with him as much as he allowed me to, so I ain't gonna do that. Like, what was your stance my, on that? My standing point with that is, and that's a good, good question because it, it, it happened that way. Like, when it became, came to the fact and some girls was on my you know my facebook page and i didn't know they had came to my page one day and they was like oh i remember when he came over southeast and was like extortion you know that's my baby mother you know this that never so in, in that situation with me i really wasn't running around trying to mess with certain dudes and then dudes was basically scared to talk to me <laughs> they did they 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 was, they, they was they was like, we already know who she, you know what I'm saying, who she connected with. If we try to talk to her, go at her, he might nut off, you know what I'm saying? And in my head, I wasn't thinking like that because he had so many women, you see what I'm saying? But on some for real shit, he was thinking that. All right, so back in the 80s, um, or the late 80s, um, the, the New Yorkers came down here, right? And... and you know, uh, you know, it was kind of like a, a war starting to brew and kind of did brew. Like, what was the vibe or the vibe? What was that vibe like? Not, you know, 
it just being a female because a lot a lot of war started because of y'all females you know they, they say <laughs> dc got some of the baddest women in the world you hear me so it was you know what i mean we you know said, and that's so, what i was saying when i made that video up about why mr branch when it said that shit about my son over abroad <laughs> So yeah, mm -hmm. so go ahead. But, so when they when the New York dudes came and what? So like, what, what was the vibe like down there during that time? What was the tension like, and what was the vibe like the vibe, during in the vibe, Basically, you know, a lot of people. This is what this is what was told to me. You know, what I'm saying I didn't hear this out of his mouth because I didn't get in his business. But as far as that rat that told on him. A lot of the DC guys, they wasn't feeling him. And they really wasn't feeling him when he, you know, when he got with him. They wasn't feeling him. They felt that, you know, the rat was in their way, basically. Mm -hmm. So when them New York dudes came here, they upset. They upset a lot. And a lot of, you know, us as females, we like out of town dudes. We stop, you know, stop dealing with our own kind in our city. And we go with the out of town dudes. So a lot of the females, they started dealing with them out of town dudes. And the DC dudes, they felt uncomfortable. They didn't yeah. like it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of them fitted in, but the majority of them, they didn't. Did you ever have, you ever talk to an out of towner? Yes. With that, when, with, when, with when, that, when. Before I think Wayne I, or doing Wayne? That's what I'm about to tell you. Okay, good. He went. When Nicosi went to jail, and he went to jail in 1992, um, okay. I met this dude. I met Curtis, which was like 19. I think I met Curtis eight months after Nicosi went to jail, and he was a New York dude. And he was one of the biggest New York dudes here. Actually, he's still here <laughs> somewhere, but he was one of the biggest New York dudes here. So he at that time was. They was all down on New York Avenue running in all them hotels down there. They was living in the hotels and hustling out the hotels. And then he uh, went across on Minnesota Avenue. It's a big building, uh, apartment complex across the street from the subway station on the Minnesota Avenue. He was right. over there. He was over there. He was running all of that. So, yeah, I did. So, you was messing with boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, they say the DC women got the most game though. And I, I've been a little bit in the United States. It's you know, and I and to and my my initial thought being here is like, man, it gotta be like, you know, better women different places because this is what I see. And that's just me keeping it real. Right. But then um when I, I actually go other places, it's like it was like, like oh no. Nah. It's it's just something about the females here. That is just they, they game is tighter, they swag mm -hmm. tighter, they 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 confidence is tighter, they fly. I don't keep even a dirty one fly. <laughs> <It's horrible. laughs> it's for real though, like now, you feel I mean, me? All right. DC DC dudes to me now is just like ugh because I guess because I'm I'm used to a certain type of dude, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I don't, I, I see these DC dudes, my, I don't know if certain ones went to prison and they just, you know, they, they, they just, they, they gossip too much for me. So what, what landed you in jail for nine years? I was doing, this was after Nicole was gone. After he was gone, I was doing checks and credit cards, so identity theft and all that. Mm. So I, I that hit was that up. was a big thing. That I was a up. big thing. Yes, I, hit I remember I that, that was a big thing. He, I the, drove a U-Haul for eight years doing, you know, doing the checks and the credit cards, putting my furniture, anything I wanted to sell was in the back of a U-Haul. I remember that's how the uh L G B Q T Yeah, that group of people. Um, they used to have the U Hauls and you could see yep. you, know, you know, then next thing you know, you, you might see a dude who butt and fly <laughs> and now he got all the polo in the world. In the it's world. Like, oh, you know, and 
believe it or not, it was in them you ho. That's how I learned. I learned from a he's dead now, but I learned from a LGBTQ. He put me on, and I never stopped. Mm. Yep. But yeah. now you stop. Right, we oh, yeah, you I, stopped. I, I she can't, uh -uh, no, yeah, she I, stopped. I, she said I she never stopped, but that was time. I wouldn't even waste my time going back to that. I wouldn't waste my time. It's a waste of time. Nine years though, you must have been getting it in. They don't and, give but, you that much time if you 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 had to pay cash or some bitch. It was more than that. It was more than that. I see. I kept. Oh, so like, oh, you did nine no, years? I, I did nine and a half. Yeah. Oh. But my time had went up to 20 years because of the fact that I kept getting locked up. I kept getting locked up, kept getting out, kept getting locked up, kept getting out. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the thing is, they tell you when you hit the fast mark, it's over. But that was, un it was incoherent to me. So when the fast came to get me, I'm thinking, my, I'm, I'm going to get out like I always get out. No. Nah. That was a negative. How old was you when you got locked up? I was 39, 39, 40. You was 40 years old when you did started doing nine years? What? Now that, that's different. I wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what so going to jail at 39 and 40 during nine, 10 years, especially for like a female, what does that feel like? What is the thought pattern? Hell. Like, show they, me the gates. They sentenced me. I went, first of all, I went, I had a Merlin charge first. So I went in when I was 35. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through the Mer. I had to, you know, you got to stay and be sentenced and all that. So I had to go through all of that. They ended up letting me out, letting me out. And I was supposed to get probation. But when I got out, I ended up catching the phase charge. Mm -hmm. So that, that took everything. So they put me back in. I went back in when I was 37, and that was it. And I didn't get sentenced for my phase time until I was 40. Mm. And how much was the actual sentence? I was looking at 20 because they had been looking for me for 20 years, so they said. So I was looking at 20, but by the time they did the guidelines and they broke it down so much. What year was this? 2006 when I first started oh, yeah. all this. Because the feds took over in, what, 2001? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They took over in D.C. in 2001. Mm -hmm. Um. Dang. You got a, a a very 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 nice story, and um, yes. we gonna tap back in for a part two of this, maybe even a part three. And you already know we locking in. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, how long? Last question. This this is when you when you reached out and you wanted to um to get onto the say cheese um platform how long did it take you when you reached out to dc gospel blunt and world war polo before you had an answer it took the same day <laughs> couple, same of day. couple of hours couple, couple of hours, hours. Couple and hours. did did the situation go right were you were you treated fairly yes i was I was treated very fairly to something that I wouldn't even imagine. Okay. I had, I wasn't even looking for what happened. I wouldn't even imagine it. Okay. I wouldn't even imagine it. Right. So you brothers are very good and you are honorable. You you stand on what you you stand on business. You must right, definitely we, stand on business. We definitely appreciate that. Um, um, I'm, we're gonna go live maybe two more times so we can get a little bit more deep into this. Okay. And you know we're gonna lock in and we're gonna start because. The documentary, the documentary is gonna be dope, but even more dope. But we're gonna do the movie. Okay. It's gonna be yeah. crazy. Yeah, because right. I will start in my documentary like tomorrow. I got somebody who's right. gonna start. You know, yeah. That's dope. Mm -hmm. so we gonna lock in. So okay. um, you already got my number. If you need me, hit me, and we are gonna do this again. But probably another day or so. I gotta re up on the question. <laughs> Cause I, I don't want I don't
don't see you you got a phenomenal story of your own i don't want to just get on here and just only be talking about your baby father yeah i i I really want to let him i i I, you know i i understand you know because it's you can't change who i am but to be honest about it i just want to i wanted everybody to get the initial truth that he wasn't some type of monster or you know he didn't just go around jumping in people grass killing people and stuff like that so you know i think i got that part and that part about being with the men you know i kind of came out with that that was really bothering me so right now i think my thing with him is i want to just let him try to let his name rest and see if they can follow suit just let him rest let him do his time. If ain't nobody trying to help him get out, just leave him. Leave him alone. Ain't nobody trying to make no money off his name. Just, just leave him alone. Let him. Let, let can his he name get? Um, can he get mail? Can yeah, he get mail? He can get mail. He can get mail. And he can get money orders too, right? Yes, he can. All right. So if you wanna, if you wanna say his name and his 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 fair number or whatever, no, so I don't want to do that on here. Uh, uh, uh. I don't want to do All that. All right, cool. Here. If anybody right. want it, you can um inbox me and I'll give it to you. All right, inbox cool. Just All let right, his cool. that, let his name die. Just let it let his shit die down, son. Just let it go. And to all <laughs> the Muslims, we're gonna keep him in our doors because he's definitely one of our brothers. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um this World World Parlor Entertainment Group, we was just on a small interview, which is gonna <laughs> be a very, very big soon. Um we we'll miss um a store should wine praise baby mother and we locked in so um it is what it is it ain't what it ain't but we out <laughs> we out <laughs> <laughs>